Island of the Blue Dolphins, Chapter 22 I did not go into the cave, nor did I take the necklace from the rock. That night I slept on the headland at the place where I had left my baskets. At dawn I went back to the ravine. There I hid myself on a brushy ledge. It was near the spring, and from it I could see the mouth of the cave. The sun rose and shone through the ravine. I could see the necklace lying on the rock. The stones looked blacker than they had in the darkness, and there were many of them. I wanted to go down to the cave and count them to see if they would make two loops around my neck, but I did not leave the ledge. I stayed there all the morning. The sun was high when Rantu barked, and I heard steps below me. The girl came out of the brush singing. She walked to the cave, but when she saw the necklace lying on the rock, she grew quiet. She picked up the necklace and put it down again and peered into the mouth of the cave. Two of my baskets were still there. Then she went and drank from the spring and started off through the brush. I jumped to my feet. Tutak, I cried, running down the ravine. Tutak! She came out of the brush so quickly that she must have been waiting nearby to see if I would return. I ran to the rock and put on the necklace and turned around for her to admire it. The beads made not two loops, but three. They were long and oval instead of round, which is a very hard shape to make and takes much skill. Wincha, she said. Wincha, I said after her, the word strange on my tongue. Then I said the word that meant pretty in our language. Wintai, she said and laughed because this was strange to her. She touched the necklace, giving the word for it, and I gave mine. We pointed out other things, the spring, the cave, a gull flying, the sun and the sky, Ron to asleep, trading the names for them and laughing because they were so different. We sat there on the rock until the sun was in the west and played this game. Then Tutak rose and made a gesture of farewell. Mane, she said, and waited to hear my name. Wana Pele, I answered, which, as I have said, means the girl with the long black hair. I did not tell her my secret name. Mane, Wana Pele, she said. Hase no, Tutak, I replied. I watched her go through the brush. I stood for a long time listening to her footsteps until I could hear them no more, and then I went to the headland and brought the baskets back to the cave. Tutak came again the next day. We sat on the rock in the bright sun, trading words and laughing. The sun went fast in the sky. The time came soon when she had to leave, but she returned on the day that followed. It was on this day, when she was leaving, that I told her my secret name. Karana, I said, pointing to myself. She repeated the word, but she did not understand what it meant. Wana Pele, she said, frowning. I shook my head. Pointing again to myself, I said, Karana. Her black eyes opened wide. Slowly, she began to smile. Paseno, Karana, she said. That night, I began to make a gift for her in return for the necklace she had given me. At first I thought I would give her a pair of my bone earrings, but remembering that her ears were not pierced and that I had a basket of abalone shells already flaked into thin discs, I set about making a circlet for her hair. I bored two holes in each of the discs using thorns and fine sand. Between them I put ten ol olivella shells, which were no longer than the tip of my little finger and threaded them all together with sinew. I worked five nights on the circlet, and on the fifth day, when she came, I gave it to her, putting it around her head and tying it in the back. Wincha, she said, and hugged me. She was so pleased that I forgot how sore my fingers were from boring the holes in the hard shells. Many times she came to the cave, and then one morning she did not come. I waited for her all that day, and at dusk I left the cave and went to the ledge where I could watch the ravine 
fearing that the men had learned that I lived there and would find me. That night I slept on the ledge. The night was cold with the first wind of winter. Tutak did not return the next day, and I remembered that it was near the time when the Aleut hunters would leave. Perhaps they had already gone. That afternoon I went to the headland. I climbed the rock and crawled across it until I could look over the rim. My heart beat loud. The Aleut ship was still there, but men were working on the deck and canoes were going back and forth. The wind blew hard and a few bales of otter skins lay on the shore so probably the ship would leave at dawn. It was dark when I got back to the ravine. Since the wind was very cold and I was no longer afraid that the Aleuts would find me, I made a fire in the cave and cooked a supper of shellfish and roots. I cooked enough for Rantu and me and for Tutak. I knew Tutak would not come, yet I put her food beside the fire and waited. Once Rantu barked, and I thought I heard the sound of footsteps and went to the opening and listened. I waited a long while and did not eat. Clouds moved from the north, covering the cold sky. The wind grew louder and made wild noises in the ravine. At last I closed the mouth of the cave with stones. At dawn I went to the headland. The wind had died. Fog lay over the sea, washing against the island in gray waves. I waited a long time for a glimpse of Coral Cove, but finally the sun burned away the fog. The little harbor was deserted. The Aleut ship, with its red-beaked prow and red sails, had gone. At first, knowing I could now leave the cave and move back into my house on the headland, I was happy. But as I stood there on the high rock, looking down at the deserted harbor and the empty sea, I began to think of Tutok. I thought of all the times we had sat in the sun together. I could hear her voice and see her black eyes squinting closed when she laughed. Below me, Rantu was running along the cliff, barking at the screaming gulls. Pelicans were chattering as they fished the blue water. Far, far off, I could hear the bellow of a sea elephant. But suddenly, as I thought of Tutok, the island seemed very quiet.